Hi, Mr. Lance. Hi, Hi to Officer Lobsinger. Hi, Officer Lobsinger. And they're not here, right? You're just going to be here for the lesson today and try not to, to get nervous or anything. There's no reason to. Um, right now, I'd like you to get the roadmap completed while I get attendance. Our lab today, so we're doing part three of the enzyme and lactose intolerance lab. Um, up till now, you've answered some questions. Uh, you've created a model on paper for how enzymes function. Yesterday's focus was, if you recall, about um, does lactose um, get broken down by lactate or lactase on our lab tables? Does it work? Yeah. Like that? Um, so, big picture question. Why are we studying enzymes in the first place? What are your thoughts about that, Jason? They're the catalyst for life. They are, right? We've, we've studied the fact that most enzymes or most reactions don't really happen naturally. Um, so one thing that I hope, and I always hope that, they, that you feel that this is true, is that my classes tell a story about life, right? I feel like when I was in high school, biology was stamp collecting a bunch of facts, and it wasn't until I got to college that I was able to put those facts together. And so as we proceed through the year, understanding the nature of life and, and, and all its kind of beauty is uh, my goal for you. Um, so enzymes are, as you said, important for helping reactions to proceed. Um, they're helper molecules. What is the primary obstacle to many reactions actually happening? Parker. The two um, reactants colliding or in the right orientation. Right, so we don't expect that to happen naturally, right? Um, we've also discussed the fact that most reactions require a, a certain amount of energy to proceed. What was the term that we associated with that, that energy needed to get a reaction going? Alex. Activation energy. Activation energy. So what do, what do enzymes do to the activation energy? What? What do they do to the activation energy? They reduce the amount needed. Yeah, exactly. They make what would be a big hill into a kind of a tiny hill. Um, so what are we trying to do today? What's the question that we're trying to answer? Joe. Does lactose work in the stomach? Right, so we've determined that lact, well, you said lactose work in the stomach. Do you want to rephrase that? Lactate. Lactate, which is the enzyme lactase. We've determined that the enzyme seems to work on our lab tables just fine. But we want to know, will it work in our stomach? What's different about our stomach versus the lab table? Go ahead. It has acid that will denature the protein-based enzyme. Right, so we want to know, does the environment of our stomach, which has a super low pH, right, is that going to denature the enzyme. What does that mean, that word denature? Uh, Ren, do you remember what that means? Um, I think it's kind of like to stop it from doing its job or get it to do its job. It does stop it. But what's happening? Anybody can help here. What's happening to the enzyme that's denatured? Jerry? The protein starts to like unwind. It does. It changes shape. It can unwind. And that could cause um, the enzyme to not function. Now, I want, what I'm hoping out of all this is that you build a good model in your brain for what enzymes are and how they work. So if you picture an enzyme being denatured, what is not happening? In other words, what's preventing that reaction from occurring? So kind of think about what you've learned the last two days. And can you kind of point to something that wouldn't occur that you've learned is supposed to occur? It's a hard one, but I just let me dig a little deeper here. Let's go back to our objectives for the lesson itself. That might help trigger, right? So we're describing structure and function, factors that affect the rate at which enzymes work, and then there's some terminology we've, we've been trying to learn as well. 
So things like active site and substrate. Looking at the objective number three up here, is there something on that list that might change? If an enzyme, now we have hands going up, don't we? Go ahead. Oh, like the shape of the active site. Exactly. So we, we've learned that that substrate and active site have to fit together in order for the reaction to, to proceed, for either the molecules to be brought together in just the right geometric orientation, or for stress to be added to those bonds if we're going to break those substances down. All right. So we're slowly building our mental model. And I think that's the trick to most of biology is trying to visualize what's happening because a lot of what we learn in this class is pretty abstract. But it's totally within your ability to visualize. Um, one last question and then we'll get rolling. Let's suppose that there was a genetic mutation okay, that changed an amino acid in a protein that was an enzyme. Could that actually cause the enzyme to stop functioning? And why? That's the hard part. I saw a lot of yeses right away, but why? Parker? Because it might change, like, if it likes water or dislikes water, so it changed the entire shape and no longer could fit anything. That's a great answer. So if it likes water, the amino acid likes water or doesn't like water, what are the terms that we learn that are associated with that? Hydrophilic and hydrophobic. Right, so if we have a hydrophobic amino acid where there used to be a hydrophilic amino acid, that new amino acid is going to be buried deep in the the enzyme instead of being on the outside, and that changes the whole shape. And again, we could possibly change the active site. So linking back to things we've learned already, right? Building your mental model. All right, let's get rolling. Um, listen to all the directions before you do anything. Um, number one, we're going to clear off our desk like we always do. The only wait, so I'm done though. The only thing we're going to have out is what we need to do the lab. Um, I'll have one person work to come and grab the lab kits, the supplies. Somebody else at your table, take a quick look around and figure out if anybody has glasses on. But one person can go over to the, the goggle cabinet and grab goggles for everybody. And then we'll all come back and we'll get rolling on the lab. You've already checked out your procedure with me. Um, and then I'll, I'll come around and kind of help you out. And um, we'll come back together in a little bit. you got the... Oh, yeah, we're going to do Something I noticed last period, as you're getting ready to roll here. Remember, after you add your solutions together, how long do you have to wait before you add the paper test strip? Five minutes. Because this procedure was created by you, some of the students last period forgot to wait those five minutes to give the different solutions the time to, to mix. Um, don't use the same toothpick to mix each solution. And um, once you've added that testing trip, if you're, if you're not getting any changes, how can we speed up the changes? Do you remember? When you're all finished, I just need that job that you create the model with. And then the last, everything else is sort of like, Four drops of acid, four drops of lead, two drops of lactic. I'm just back to the other this way. Make sure this doesn't get thrown away. This will come in with your lab. And everything else can be thrown away. At the end. Here's the acid. If your testing strip is kind of curling up because it's paper, uh, just find a paperweight of some sort, a beaker or something to hold it flat so that your liquids don't move around. Sometimes that can be a problem. You can put two in the other ones too. Yeah. 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 Yeah
YouTube. Uh, um, if you happen to need more acetic acid, aka vinegar, um, I do have extra. So I know some of your protocols required a little bit more than others, and you didn't you didn't get very much in your lab kit. We wait five minutes first, and then we you do. You wait five minutes first, giving everything time for uh, all those molecules are in motion. Unless, of course, we go down to what temperature? Uh, low freezing. Nope, colder than that. What's the temperature at which all molecular motion stops? Zero. Absolute, Absolute zero, right? We're not going to get there. <laughs> but no, you're, all that motion is helping to make for giving it time to, so to commingle, I guess, right? <laughs> We can answer a couple of questions. Yeah. Like the first day. Yeah, this so could you point to a control? Could any of you point to one of your that you would call a control? Right. So why are we testing to see if glucose is present in something we know has glucose? Yeah, that tells us do our paper strips actually work, right? Is for your experimental group? Yeah. What's your conclusion so far? Working, but slow. Yeah. to water. So it's making it harder for those. You've got several places where it's just pure substances, and that's the one where they're all mixed, right? Group and others are getting this faint little response. What do you think accounts for the difference if you're testing the same three reagents? Marker? What's that? Maybe the volume that you use? What else could affect it? How well you mixed it? And perhaps some of you might have breathed on it to warm it up, and maybe others didn't because you felt silly doing that. Right? Um, I know we're not done yet, but first, your first uh, reaction is what? Does the, does the enzyme work in an, in an acidic environment? Yes. It seems to, doesn't it? Anybody not getting any result at all? No change at all? all right, let me see if I show of hands. How many of you got a really strong result in your experimental group? I got this group over here. How many of like a little bit of a green result, but just not as green as the glucose positive control, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I got a couple questions, but I want you guys to process this first. So we'll come back together in a few minutes. But work on, on um, finishing it up if you need more time, obviously, to carry out the experiment itself. But um, you, I know these aren't comfortable. Once you're happy with the, the, the data that you're collecting, you can clean up your table, spray it down, get everything ready, and then do the rest of the questions without your goggles. So that, so I seem like that seems to be where most of you are right now. Oh, yeah, so kind of the repeat of yesterday, right? Yeah, so that we can compare. Yeah, exactly. And then five is your uh, today's experimental group of yeah, two, two, and two. Water, yes, and the lactate, and the milk, and the lactate, the lactate, and 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 Darkish, whitish. Yeah, yeah but then the end is super dark. Yeah. Like, that's interesting. I wonder if dark immediately. Yeah, I wonder if, like, if you imagine the circle of liquid, I wonder if, like, it was mixed really well just in that one area, but other areas it didn't really get mixed. Well. <laughs> Put it all in the back. Look how, look how, um, how dark your number five is now. See how a little bit of time. Oh, should we change it then? Cool. You might want to. I, I say that's a really Just strong reaction. It, it just needed more time. Dark green. <laughs> so instead of a minute, it took more like five minutes, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. So our hypothesis was right that it doesn't work like as effectively, but it still eventually works. Yeah. Please power back to that. All right. So. All right. We're good. I think it worked. I don't. I can't take that. You're done. Wait. Why?
Because the heat will denature the protein in my pores. I want to check her out. I hope it's not hydrochloric. You guys can disagree. Yeah, she can. It's you have to put your paper on the answer. the protein Changing the requirement. They have our names on the phone. Yeah. Herman, that the enzyme seems to work in acid, right? Now, why would you think the enzyme would work in such a harsh environment when we've talked so much about acids denaturing proteins? A tough one to think about for a minute, but what thoughts pop into your mind about that? Parker. Maybe the enzyme works fast enough where it doesn't have enough time to be denatured and still can convert some of the glucose into, or some of the lactose into glucose. One thing we've learned about enzymes is that not very many of them are needed. They're used over and over and over, so they kind of hang around for a while. So that might explain, like your reasoning might work if they were used quickly and used up, but we always made new enzyme, but that's not really what's happening. Good, good thought, but it's not accurate, which is fine. I don't mind wrong answers. I love wrong answers. It gives us stuff to talk about, right? Do you think it makes sense that enzymes that are found in, a, in, a, in an acidic environment would behave differently than, than those that don't, right? So we have an enzyme in our, in our small intestine called trypsin. Our small intestine has a pH of like 8. It's a base. If you put that enzyme in the stomach, it wouldn't work. But it works in a, you know, where it's at. Right? So you can think about how these enzymes evolved to work in their unique environments. Um, in the 1970s, uh, a guy named Dr. Kerry Mullis used an enzyme that we discovered in the 50s um, called well, it's called TAC polymerase. Do you remember me talking about polymerase with you guys? I haven't taught you about DNA replication yet, but if you remember a couple days ago, I talked to you about enzymes that build things. One of the examples I gave was polymerase. So TAC polymerase was discovered, it stands for Thermophilus aquaticus. It was discovered in a microorganism that was found living in hot springs in Yellowstone National Park. So here's an enzyme that functions in boiling water to make DNA, all right? And so his insight, he's a strange, eccentric man, super smart. His insight, he was literally driving a motorcycle down a highway in California, and he had a thought that he could use this special enzyme to basically um, photocopy DNA. Like, have you ever heard about how we can find just the smallest amount of DNA at a crime scene, and then they can use that to link it to a suspect? What they do first, is this process that we'll learn about when we do our biotechnology unit. It's called polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. Now, have you heard of PCR in the last three or four or five years? Hmm. I bet some of the adults in this room might have. It was actually the basis of the COVID test, that rapid COVID test that we could do later on during the pandemic. So we use PCR now, and it all came from the discovery of this enzyme that works at high temperature. Where Normally, polymerase would be denatured. We use it for crime scene investigations, for, for testing, like biomedical testing. We use it for paternity testing. It essentially allows us to take the smallest amounts of DNA and photocopy them or amplify them into large quantities that we can use for biomedical testing. It's a really cool thing, and we'll circle back to that when we get to our biotech unit later on in the year but I wanted to point out there are enzymes that work in extreme conditions, right? There's always exceptions. So at this point, we want to work to finish our lab questions. If you finish early, do what this table's doing. Jump on your Chromebooks and take a look at that video lesson that I posted for you. Um, and then we'll kind of wrap up enzymes um, Monday and move to the next molecule, right? The next mo molecule, which I believe would be nucleic acids.
right? And then after that, we have lipids, and then we'll be finished up with our, our biochemistry unit. All right, so go ahead and get going.